Welcome back to the Fox Robbins Business Show. Uh, come on in. Great to have you back. Uh, the Fox Robbins Show is all about developing your best business ideas. Uh, uh, Fox Robbins is all about encouraging, uh, advising, and you know, being a cheerleader. You know, for a small business, it really doesn't matter if you're just thinking, simply thinking about starting a business or or buying an existing business or getting into a franchise, those kind of details. It's only in the concept stage or you actually have started a business or bought a business uh, and, uh, and things are running well or they're running maybe not so well. <laughs> Whatever your condition is, you know, come and see us. We want to help. Uh, and uh, I'm the co-host of the show, uh, Bill Fox, but the other co-host is, uh, this is interesting, you want to know that this guy is invincible yeah really and he's irresistible well that i know <laughs> and he's a, totally exemplary exemplary thank Co you coach that, Robert. roy what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> and our uh, our guest this is a uh a special episode it's one of three uh part one part two part three this is part this one is part three with our our guest roy heffernan Roy, nice to have you on the show. Thanks, Bill. Roy is on, on owner the Life is Good Company, and uh, we spent uh, episode one on talking quite a bit about the the startup process and the branding, and uh, then we got into uh, a second episode into clarity and uh, developing the advantage uh, properly and and recognizing superpowers, and be uh, all based on optimism. And uh, now we're going to go into uh, branching out. Episode three is going to be called the integrated model, you know, for the company. And you're going to be interested in this. You won't see this. I don't think you see it a lot, but it's it's undoubtedly it's out there. But not uh, the way that that life is good is branched out is very very interesting. And you guys need to hear about this. So uh, without further ado, let's get into that, Roy. I mean. Uh, 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 life is good. In fact, did expand outward into a um, a LIG Kids Foundation. Tell us about that. Yes, Bill. Uh, I'm going to go broader first, and then I'll and then I'll narrow it down mm -hmm. if you don't mind. So, you know, there's this there's this um, absolutely important effort out there right now called conscious capitalism. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the name captures it appropriately, I think. It's cap, look at, life is good, loves capitalism. Sure. We love capitalism. Mm. We believe that the difference makers in this world on solving problems, all kinds of problems, is gonna be conscious capitalists. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be capitalists who make a lot of money and do the right things with right. it, okay? Right. That doesn't mean we don't respect nonprofits, we do. Many nonprofits just aren't run very well. I'm not saying all of them, I'm saying many of them. I agree with that 100%. We've spoken a lot about nonprofits having a wrong attitude about capitalism or about uh, entrepreneurship, and yeah. uh, won't get into it here, but uh, I love what you're saying. Please continue. We also believe that the government is not our salvation <laughs> uh, at all. Yeah, right. Um, and I think we kind of prove that every day that yeah. um, we can't solve the problems through our government, legislation. regardless of where you sit on the right. on the spectrum, can't legislate morality. So we are proud to be part of conscious capitalists, mm. and there actually is an entity that is called conscious capitalism. And people like uh, the founder of Whole Foods mm. and uh, the founder of the Container Store. Mm -hmm. And um, and then there are some other companies that were conscious capitalists before that was cool, and that's people like Patagonia. Mm, yeah, I mean, they've cared so. about the environment for sustainability, <laughs> right? So it's not that it's a new concept, mm. um, and and certainly one of the things I'm I'm proud of Bert and John Jacobs, the founders of Life Is Good, they were they were conscious capitalists before they had money, mm. and I respect that a lot. Yeah, it's. it's you could argue it's easy to be generous when you have a ton of cash. Mm. It's not so easy when you don't have a ton of cash. That's true. And it they comes were from the heart. And, yeah. and they were making decisions early on mm. that um, uh, demonstrated their generosity 
and demonstrated that they realized that they needed to be in business, wanted to be in business mm. for something greater than just lining their pockets. Right. Not that that's a bad thing. No, well, that's how you stay in business and, and you grow that. You can do more good that's right. if you do it right. That's right. Right. And we believe that. That's why we want to get bigger. We don't want to get bigger just for the sake of getting bigger. Mm. But as I talk more about the Life is Good Kids Foundation and what we do, mm. we can help more kids if we're bigger. Yeah. Period. It's, that's exactly right. Period. Yeah. So, so now to the Kids Foundation. Let me. I got into a. I get into an argument with uh, 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 one of the one of the very top uh, professors at Stanford Business School. Me, I mean, no, nobody, me. But uh, I was sitting in a. I didn't go. I didn't go to the, that business school. I went there for a seminar. But uh, this guy's a, a top-rated professor at, at Stanford. Uh, stood, stood, stood before the audience and said, the only, the only purpose of business is to make money. And I, I raised my hand and I said, that's, a, that's the worst thing you could possibly say. <laughs> and I, I, was, I wasn't in disagreement. I was angry that a person who has a, uh, you know, a, 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 a standing and a voice you know, to... Uh, to students, uh, yeah. Talk, Young you know, minds. talk to students and say the only reason you know you have a business is to make money, and I said that that's that's terrible, and I and I, I and you and I if I could I would have you stop saying that immediately. And that this, how did he respond, Bill? Oh, he uh, he he treated he looked he looked down his nose. lengthy nose at me <laughs> as a, uh, a questionable creature. Well, let me tell you that um, we clearly disagree with that as well, Bill, I and do. line up where you are. And I'll, I'll just tell you a quick little thing about Bert and John. We, we have made decisions over the years as owners of Life is Good where uh, Bert and John have said, well, if we're sitting there and we're 80 years old and we're in our rocking chairs and we're looking back on this, are we ever going to be disappointed in ourselves that we started the Life is Good Kids Foundation? Mm. <laughs> and, and the answer is no. Of course so, not. Yeah. so, 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 we, we don't buy into the fact that their our only job is to make money. Mm. Making money is important. Because That's the means to doing that exactly. good work, but yeah. it's not the end result. Right. So, um, you might remember in the last episode, I talk about I talked about Lindsay Beggins, I do. and uh, Lindsay was this just angel of a young gal who um, proved everybody wrong by beating stage four cancer and. Uh, just graduated from college and is just this gorgeous, young, vivacious, smart woman mm. making a difference in the world. Yeah. And she, <clears throat> as I said the last time, she um, she got a, one of every uh, Life is Good hat and she went door to door up at uh, you know the fourth floor of the Children's Hospital where all the kids were struggling with very serious, very, very serious cancer. And she was an ambassador for Life is Good, not the company. Mm. She was ambassador for oh, the life concept. Is good. You know, she was ambassador yeah. for what it stands for, right? And that is, we can beat this thing. Bill, you said last episode, with an attitude like that, it really goes a long way to yep. assist your healing, yeah. Right. right? Yeah. So anyway, when when she did this, I remember Bert and John didn't know really what to do with it. Hmm. This happened under under their brand, and yeah. they're like, "Wow, I mean, that was super powerful." Right. We got to put that over here for a minute and carry on, but yeah. that was really something. Yeah. So, <clears throat> as it turns out, Lindsay and a few others led to the development of the Life is Good Kids Foundation. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the brothers knew that they had something very powerful right. that could assist people in their lives in meaningful ways. Mm. So, what does that look like? I also mentioned that we believe in, 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 in the youth and the, yeah. the fact that they live open. Right. Well, that's why we chose to focus on children with our kids foundation with our foundation as opposed to yeah. elderly, right. they need our help. Yeah. Teenagers, they need our help. Yep. We chose kids. Mm. We think it aligns with our brand. Mm. Now what do you do with that? Well, mm. The first thing we did is we, um, we had a pumpkin festival up in Maine, mm. a pumpkin festival. Mm. <laughs> and we didn't even know if anyone was going to show up. Yeah. All of a sudden, pickup trucks with pumpkins start showing up yeah. just from the, the local community. Yeah. And we had a heck of a day and we raised 
I think we raised fifteen thousand dollars that day mm -hmm. when we were a fledgling company. Yeah. That was a lot of money for us. Sure. Okay, so we, we give that away. And that's and then we said, okay, what else can we do with this? What what if we do a pumpkin festival on the Boston Common? Oh yeah. And we and we raised over a million dollars hmm. on at this pumpkin festival and broke the Guinness Book of World Records for the most lit pumpkins at one place at one time. <laughs> now, why did we do that? Is, that what, that. is that what this is? That's a tower of pumpkins. Yeah. Oh my That's God. That's a tower of pumpkins, yeah. and there were 31,000 pumpkins all over the Boston Common. We I caused a tremendous traffic jam downtown. <laughs> for the best of reasons. Um, terrific, terrific night. You can see it was raining. It didn't stop anybody. Yeah, right. We had a, a, a ton of people show up. Yep. Most importantly, it continued to build what we wanted, and that is uh, recognition for what the Kids Foundation was all about mm -hmm. and money coming toward the foundation right. so that we could help more people. Right. So let me stop here before I go on to the next slide and mm -hmm. talk to you about what is the Kids Foundation. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. It's really unique. Unlike foundations, most foundations that raise money mm. and then find good causes to give the money away, right. we're actually a service foundation, meaning that we deliver a service mm. through the Life is Good Kids Foundation. Right. What's the service? The service is that we train with Steve Gross's expertise. Mm. Steve Gross is our chief playmaker or CEO of the foundation. Mm. Our chief playmaker comes from a trauma background mm and has his PhD in understanding trauma in children mm. and what to do about Ooh, it. Oh, perfect. Mm. So what we have developed is a very unique training that allows for child care providers and child life providers. Child yeah. life meaning the folks that are in hospitals right. where the kids are not mobile. Right. Child care, you know yeah. what a child yeah. care yeah. provider mm -hmm. is. Sure. So we're focused on zero to six year old kids, yep. recognizing trauma in them, mm and then assisting them to become a child again, mm. which by their very nature is, is joyful. That's right, yeah. But trauma interrupts the Joy. development in a child. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And actually their brain stops growing if they've had too much trauma. Mm. And their brain gets locked down into a reptilian brain mm. designed to do one thing, survive. Right. A child can't be joyful, Fight or happy, yeah. and, and productive right. if they are in a survival mode right. all the time. Creative, right. creative. Right, <laughs> right. So, so we train child care providers all over the country, indeed outside the country. Mm -hmm. um, we we, we um, got invited to Haiti, mm. as an example, after the earthquake. Oh, yeah. And we have trained and hired full time mm. 12 Haitians. Mm. And they are the most joyful, loving people. Mm. And they have brought the Playmaker training into the 10 cities and all around Port au Prince mm. following the devastation that they had yeah. 10 years ago. Good timing. 10 years that. ago? Yeah, about Whenever. 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what we do. And yeah. now, just recently, we've teamed with Head Start oh, yeah. across the country. Operation Head Start. Right. Yeah. And we're training 100% of Head Start's uh, key personnel. Yep so that every child that they touch through Head Start gets trained with Playmaker training. Right. And begins to understand that they can be a kid again, they're given the freedom to laugh and yep. play, yep. and they begin to heal. And so that's what our foundation does. All about creating joy. Exactly. Yeah. So we took, we took um, it's interesting you say that, because when mm. I was president of the Life is Good Kids Foundation, yep. we teamed up with Project Joy. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and I actually brought the two 5013Cs together, yeah. and Project Joy is how we got Steve Gross, our chief playmaker, right. onto our staff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Add so joy it's, to it's their lives. Interesting. You said the word yeah. joy instead of pain. So then, what? So then, what do you do after a pumpkin festival? Realizing that uh, our key demographic that we'd like to develop a relationship with is young thirty-something families yes. and millennials. Right. Let's start a music festival. Sure. Primary target. So we did. Yep. We, we brought, this is Michael Franti. I don't know if you know that name, but millennials do. Mm. And um, we had all kinds, Jack Johnson closed one of our years, and we had uh, five years just amazing, amazing music festivals yeah. in Canton, Massachusetts. On Canton? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right at the foot of the Blue Hills. Oh, yeah. Beautiful field. This is, this is. That's Michael, Michael Franti. Franti. Okay. Yeah, look at them. Look at the faces on these I know people. It. The, all of these folks came together not only to hear good music. Yep 
but they came together to really feel and know life is good. That's right. And they came together to every beer that they bought, yep. every hot dog that they bought, the money went to money the kids' foundation. The kids. Why? To help more kids. And you had those young ladies like that yeah, down young there. Lady. <laughs> 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 yeah, we love 60-somethings, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. So, you know, we came to truly believe this is one of the big, beautiful boards that, were at, that was at the uh, festival. Yeah. Takers may eat well, but givers, we believe, I love that. they sleep well. Yeah. And you can see the child there just kind Playing. of relating to our dog, Rocket, yeah. and, um, and uh, being at one with uh, the whole festival. Right. So the Life is Good Kids Foundation Wait continues to can grow. We, do we need to get that? Can we see that uh, screen up close, please? Yeah. There's Rocket. Yeah, so there's Rocket and yeah. a young child at the festival. And, and patting um, Rocket. Yep, yeah, just saying, yep, I, I get this. I understand. And I'm in. I'm in with both feet. Sorry, that, that's what you said. Takers may eat well, but givers sleep well. Right. Right? Yeah. And that's what the festival was all about. These people were there. Again, I understand they're there to have fun, and they did. Hmm. But they're also there because they knew every penny was going to the kids' Exactly. Foundation. That's why they came. Yeah. Right. So this is part of the integrated model where Life is Good leverages our brand hmm. with the Life is Good Kids Foundation right. and vice versa. Right. Make yeah. no mistake about it. The for-profit company benefits by all the good things that the Life is Good Kids Foundation is doing. Mm -hmm. So this is an integrated model in the finest sense of the word. And don't get me wrong, we understand there have to be legal uh, firewalls between for-profit yeah, right. and non-profit, yeah, and we're very careful yeah. to keep that. Yeah. Right. But we blend the line everywhere we can because we believe that um, the 10% of our net profits mm. on the for-profit side that go to the Kids Foundation every year, that's a yeah. big commitment. That is a huge 10 commitment. 10% of net yeah. profits, right. that's a big commitment. Mm. That goes first and foremost before any other expenses goes to the Kids Foundation. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we celebrate that integrated mm. model. We celebrate That's helping children. That's conscious capitalism. Exactly. Life is good, needs to grow, needs to make more money, to do more good. Exactly. Right. Yep. So we're, we're active uh, in many, many areas. I, I want to be clear, though, with this picture. It bothers me a little bit. We are not focused on African Americans. No. We are focused on, believe me, there is trauma in children in every suburb of Boston. I don't care if it's Dorchester or if it's Weston. That's true. And so That's true. I, I gotta change this slide. Yeah. But one slide I'm not gonna change is is me in Haiti. Yeah. And this was an experience I've been there four or five times. Yeah. It just uh, you know I can see I'm a little younger then, but um, <laughs> but but this experience in, in the ten cities with these children and the singing that we did and yeah. the um, the uh, Playmaker training woven into yeah. the relationship that we built with the 12 Haitians that we hired mm -hmm. was spectacularly powerful. Yeah. You know, it allowed these children. See, in Haiti, it's the worst of the worst for two reasons. You have chronic trauma and you have acute trauma. Yeah. Chronic trauma is when you live in poverty, you are living in uh, uh, a violent scenario oh. day in and day out yeah, with fear with fear yeah. that's a chronic trauma situation sure. the flip side of that or, or another piece of trauma is acute trauma and mm. acute trauma comes when you have an earthquake yeah and all of a sudden through one experience your whole world gets turned upside down right the challenge in Haiti is you have both yeah you've got chronic trauma Which because they perpetual. live in a very difficult right. environment and then along comes the earthquake, and now you've got acute trauma on top of yeah, it. Yeah, that exacerbates. So our work with the Life is Good Playmakers in Haiti mm. is hugely important. Mm. And I'll also tell you that when the money was flowing in Haiti after the earthquake mm. and the cameras were on, mm -hmm. yeah. the number of 501c3s in Haiti ballooned from 2,500 to over 10,000. <laughs> oh, Do you want to guess how many 501c3s in Haiti are now? It's there back are now? to 2,500. It's back to 2,500. 2, That's right. Yeah. Although 2,501, because we're there. There yeah, you <laughs> go. Oh, you weren't there originally. Good. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we do, and that's what we're trying. That's the difference we're trying to make. And yes, that's the integrated model. What's the lesson here for someone who might be a young entrepreneur or an old entrepreneur starting mm. their business? Mm. 
The new generations really care about this. They, they want to see what difference you're making right. in the world. Yep. They want to see that more than boomers did. Yep. They do. They want to see that more. Mm -hmm. And so it's an important element of your business model and you're going to be doing the right thing. Yeah. So what's wrong with that picture? There's nothing wrong with it. We're talking no, about teaching. I, uh, when I think about life is good, I, and I, I questioned you previously about the, um, uh, the, power, the power today of the internet, uh, websites and social media sites and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but that, it's, uh, it's, not just, it's not just the internet, it's an attitude. There's an attitude going on that people interested in you, they want to know that you have a story, mm. uh, an interesting story, mm -hmm. uh, and um, and a meaningful story, a, a meaningful, meaningful story, yeah. yeah, a meaningful thing. Now, what I'm trying to say is that uh, me, me and Coach, you know, when we grew up, uh, companies like yours said, "Here's an ad, you know, in a, a newspaper, the magazine, a yellow page says, here's a here's a T-shirt, buy it." Mm. That's the end of the message. Right. Mm. Here's a T-shirt. Ten bucks. Send us ten bucks. It's you get a T-shirt. Right. End of story. Right. I'm I'm over. I'm dramatizing, but it was it was that. Uh, here we are. Here's a product. Send us a check. Buy it. Today, that is off the map, man. Right. Because now, uh, people want to be interested in you. I'm searching for my. You know, the they want a relationship. Group. People care. But why you guys? Yeah. Did you guys know that when you created this company that that you would be with it, you know, with the pace? It's interesting you say that. I, I say a lot. I say all the time that Bert and John were social networkers before just, social networkers. That's just network. who they are that's, in their that's soul. Right. That's right. Yeah. Everywhere they go, they bring a frisbee. Yeah. Right. They meet people. Yeah. They relate to people. Right. And that's real. Yeah. And that's and, authentic. Yeah, and it's authentic. Yeah. And, and and that after all, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. It's it's meeting it's meeting people where they are most easily met. And right now, in a broad fashion, that's social networks. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how do you do that? What's your voice? Right. How do you show up? Mm -hmm. How are you consistent with your brand? Right. Know who you are and act like it. Right. Know who Walk you are and act like it right. all the time. Hundred percent. So we really work hard at that, mm. and we don't want to veer too far away from who we are. Mm. The cool. other thing I want to bring out is I, I spoke to you uh, when we were uh, putting the show together uh, about the not-for-profit thing, and the coach, you know, mentioned that at the beginning uh, of this episode. You know that uh, the not-for-profit thing is the worst title that anybody could put on that form of business. <laughs> yeah, it really I mean, somebody, is. Somebody, uh, so, so, some unknown person, labeled that type of business formation as not-for-profit. So. But what that has done over the years is cast a spell such that uh, those who get involved in not-for-profit say, thank God we don't have to make money. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And, uh, and the coach and I uh, you know, put this yes, on. Yes, you do. Or you can't do more good work, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Con you know, conscious capitalism, that's what we're talking about. Yes. We're talking yeah. about corporate social responsibility. But I'm bringing Big this up because today. you guys know that. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm speaking to you. I know that you know that. Yeah. But I want you to tell, you know, tell our audience, you know, understand that not for profit doesn't mean we don't have to make money in order to have the table stakes to go to the next. Right. Round. Well, you know, before I left the day to day, um, I was the chief operating optimist, <laughs> COO of Life is Good. Yeah. And I also was responsible for the finan finances of the organization. Mm -hmm. So when I was president of the Life is Good Kids Foundation, which brought together Project Joy and, yep. and the Kids Foundation, right. I was all about running the business properly as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Just because you're a nonprofit doesn't mean you drop, don't drop money to the bottom line. You Why? better. Why? Yeah. Because you, then you can use it to help more kids. That's what I've been screaming for since eight years is yeah. that, you know, it's just you don't give the profit to the stockholders, but you still have to be making money exactly. to be growing or you're not going to do more work right. for the kids. What's and that's the mission? whole idea. What What's is your the mission, mission of right. your nonprofit? He's right. Nonprofit is the wrong title for them almost. Yeah. It's misleading. You can't go through life doing this. Get out there. That's why it's the powerful company. when you bring. Yeah. That's why if you if you have the opportunity, yeah. and we all do as entrepreneurs, if you have the opportunity to bring together mm -hmm. the, even if you don't set it up, a nonprofit element, mm. a caring element, a mm. conscious capitalist element, right, 
then uh, and you leverage your for-profit yep. side, it's a real win. Yep. That's nothing has changed. Uh, it doesn't matter about the 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 for, the, the, uh, the, the for, formation of the company, be it for-profit, not-for-profit. It's the same thing: income, money in, money out, something left over that provides what Peter Drucker called the table stakes to stay in the game for the next round. That's mm. it. Okay. That's, it. That's yeah. nothing changes. No. And the new kid in the game uh, in the last few years is his benefit corporation. I think that mission of a benefit corporation yes. is a little clearer. So you spent time. You spent. Where is the money coming from? Thank you very much. Yeah. And you know how much, and when is it? Is the cash flow issue yep. like when is it coming in, and what are my expense? What's my budget? What are my expenses? And when I when I subtract one from the other, you know, are we in? Are we plus? Or, or break even or minus, where are we? And you had you paid attention to that. Well, we did. Um, we decided that ten percent of our net profits were going there, but that's not enough. Hmm. So we have wonderful partners that are assisting us with, uh, you know, revenue production for the nonprofit side. Hmm. And um, excellent. And that actually, as you get bigger, that gets better. Do more good work. So, um, yeah. you but know. this the uh, the uh, the the foundation it doesn't pull away. From the commercial side, well, it gets ten percent of our net profits. No, but I meant it doesn't uh, somehow uh, you know take energy out of running. The opposite. You know, the so opposite. Adds we energy. get we get adds energy. energy. Why? Because it lines up with who we are. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, we got to we got to uh, end this episode. And Roy, thank you very much for being on Thanks, the show. Thanks, Bill. It was a it was terrific, Roy, fabulous, terrific time Genuine with you guys. Pleasure. And, Genuine uh, thank pleasure. You, thank you guys for for listening in. Uh, again, this is uh, you've been watching the Fox Robbins Business Show. This uh, this episode and, and the other two episodes with Roy Heffernan and past shows of Fox Robbins are all uh, uploaded to YouTube for your convenience. Go to YouTube. Go to the uh, the home page at the top. You know, just type in a single word Fox Robbins F O X R O B B I N S. Click and go to the library and see uh, the uh, Roy Heffernan episodes and other past episodes of this show. Uh, thank you again. Also, uh, by the way, you can send us a message uh, by email to uh, foxrobbins at gmail.com and feel free to do that, but uh, make it uh, positive. Positive. <laughs> 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 These after these three shows, I'm sure you're going to. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>